Cameron Mabin is the newest Yes Network analyst, uh, and you will get to hear him and see him uh, this weekend. We have games on Sunday, then Monday and Wednesday, and uh, Cameron's going to be involved in all of them. And uh, he debuts today in his first uh, Yes Network appearance right here on The K Show, also on 98.7 ESPN. Cameron, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How you doing? How we doing? How's everything going? Now, was that a walk-up song of yours? Yeah, he hit it on, he hit it on the mail. That, that was my walk-up song. That's how I was feeling in 2019, you know, playing in the Bronx, coming out of the, you know, coming out of the minor leagues in Columbus, Ohio. I feel like I was grinding my whole life. That's, you know, so you, you pick a walk-up song, it, it kind of tells how you're feeling or what you're going through. So that was it. Now, I asked you this when, when we had our little uh, um, tryout tape together. Uh, you're just a child. You're 34 years old. Why? Why did you decide to to not give it another run as a player? And and I think I, I think you've seen what I put on Twitter. I think you're going to be great as a broadcaster, but but why? Why? There's there's probably still years left in you. We we spoke about it. Uh, I feel great right now. To be honest, I'm probably still one of the most athletic guys to not be on the field right now. But we talked about it, Michael. At the at the 2019, after having the experience, the chance to play. Uh, on the the biggest stage, play for a team with such nostalgia, um, you know, doing what I was able to do for the Yankees, feeling like I was such a contributor, you know, to helping the team get to the playoffs that year, uh, provi providing a spark that, you know, there's no staff for, and that's what you can do in a clubhouse. Um, you know, to have 22-plus minor league offers really kind of almost broke my spirit, I guess you could say. You know, I, I'm used to playing on at the highest level, uh, and playing for wins only, you know. When you go to the minor leagues, a lot of selfishness just comes back into play. It's you're playing for yourself. Who cares if the team wins or loses? And being at the highest level, playing, you know, Major League Baseball for so long, mm -hmm. it, it was difficult for me to go down there and play with that mindset. You know, I feel like I'm still a big leaguer. Uh, the game is is definitely a business oriented game now. I realize that much. You know, the older I, I got. But um, I just couldn't go down there and know that I could help a big league team. And uh, so I decided to, you know, call you, reach out to you, get tips from you, and, and, let's, and let's make this thing happen. Let's, let's try something else. And Michael had mentioned on the air that you nailed the audition and you're a natural. Did you know you were going to be this good at it? Uh, I honestly didn't even think I was that good. I had a lot of nervous energy. Michael was great during the audition. Uh, he made it extremely easy. Troy... Jared, they had a great team there, you know, giving me tips and, and little um, little nuggets here, here and there. So uh, I just enjoyed it. You know, I'm a guy that enjoys life. When I wake up, I'm extremely grateful. So uh, to have the opportunity to navigate in a, in a different lane, uh, but still also to continue to be, you know, attached to the game, continue to stay close to the game and, and continue to watch, you know, a team that I, you know, I have a, a, a real real uh you know passion and love for it and and i, I couldn't pick a, a better opportunity than you know to be with you guys man it's a great team to be a part of now has it ever crossed your mind cameron that like obviously you're brand new to it and you're still getting your feet wet has it crossed your mind that if you were to do a great job and, and really become a long-term yankees announcer that there's a world in which one day you're more known for that than anything else you've done up to this point um, absolutely. I, I, I understand that. And one thing that I said when I when I went into this or when I decided to that I wanted to try my, my hand in this is that I just didn't want to be another guy. I, you know, I want to win awards. I want to win Emmys. I want to uh, bring recognition to the to the, um, you know, to, to the club, to to the to the Yes Network um, myself. I want to, you know, uh, grow my brand as well. But um when it first came about, you know, it's definitely something I want to do. I was I was never all star, you know. I played for 15 years, and I and I said, let me give myself a chance to be all star at something else. So, uh, not saying it's going to happen out the gate, but I, I know that I'm putting myself around great people that I can uh, rely on to get advice from, uh, bounce ideas off of, and, and, and learn from. So, I'm a very teachable guy. I, I'm I'm extremely, um, you know extremely okay with learning you know criticism it's you know i think that's what makes me you know built for new york is everybody can't take that type of criticism so uh you know you surround yourself around good people and i think good things will happen so I, i'm not i'm not too worried about it i'm more excited than anything cameron you're gonna have to teach me because i hate criticism so when i get criticized just help me through it okay yeah you know what <laughs> luckily i'm so tech uh illiterate that i you know i make my tweet or I make a post and I don't even go back and read the comments. I don't even know what I'm looking at. I just, I just, I just say how I'm feeling and then I go about my business. All right. So you, 
the, those that are listening on radio, Cameron is, is also uh, on the TV side, and you look like you're sitting in your man cave in your house. And so you've got all these uniforms behind you. How, how do people make the cut? Who's up there and who's not? That's a good question. Um, you know, I see Griffey's years, behind throughout you. Throughout the years, you know, I didn't want all the bats and all the balls in my house, so I, I figured if I get jersey, jerseys, I, I can only do so many. Um, my, you know, who, who makes the cut? You know, guys who I, who I consider great teammates, of course. Um, guys that I consider, you know, great, you know, great players, of course. I'm a big character guy, you know. How did, how did our... Um, you know, our meeting go, you know, how did, how did our engagement go throughout, you know, during my career? What, did I think you were a cool guy uh, and whatnot. So I had an opportunity to, to rack up some cool, some, some cool jerseys, as you can see behind me. Um, so I don't have any more room now. I got a lot in the closet. I got, I got a lot of Yankee stuff on the wall. So I think, I, I think I'm, I'm going more art based now. If you can check it out, I'm going more art based, leaning towards art. You see my Nipsey hustle grinding <laughs> all my life. So you guys hit that, like I said, right on the head. Do you have a moment, you know, Cameron, that stands out to you as, like, your absolute best as a ball player? You said you were never an all-star, but you had a great career and, and, you know, lasted for a long time in this league and were productive. And in 2016, you batted over 300, over 94 games. What, what's, the, what's the career highlight for you baseball-wise? Uh, honestly, the career highlight, and this might sound really, really silly, but... I think just the relationships that I was able to garner, you know, that I was able to cultivate and grow uh, into something special. Uh, you know, you know, I really take a lot of pride in, in the way people look at me as a person. So to, uh, you know, announce my retirement and have, you know, teammates that I would never thought reached out to me that, uh, you know, let me know that I impacted their life and career. You know, I, those are things that, you know, are, you know, those are things that mean the most to me. You know, I've had a lot of awesome moments. I didn't realize I had as many, I was telling my buddy, I didn't realize I had as many walk-off walk -off hits as I did. Because um, I was always enamored with, you know, did we get the win? I grew up under Jim Leland. You know, his whole thing was, you know, if you win, it'll take care of everything. Um, so I, I never really worried about the personal stuff as much. Uh, but, you know, of course I had, you know, hitting a home run of Roger Clemens in, in, Roger Clemens in the old Yankee Stadium, making my, my debut there was was extremely exciting my grandmother who's who's older now can't watch me play so she was able to see that uh she was a rocket fan so you know having an opportunity to you know get my first hit and homer off of, off the rocket was huge um you know winning the world series was huge even though it had a lot of controversy around it it was it was it was you know exciting for me B playing 12 years and never seeing the playoffs it was exciting for me and then and then having the opportunity to play for the Yankees, put, putting the pinstripes on, I tell everybody, and I'll continue to say it, the pinstripes are a little bit heavier than every un other uniform, even though it's the same material. So, you know, playing for the Yankees, you know, the dream that you have as a kid, you know, you, you imagine this is what it's going to be like, the investment, the fans, the the glitz, the glam. I, f I honestly feel like I didn't even feel that until, you know, my, 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 my year with the Yankees. So... You know that really stood out to me, and I think you know I, I'll cherish that year that I had. It was it was a fun year for me. It's that's what it's mm -hmm. supposed to be like. That's what winning is supposed to feel like at its highest. Well, you, and, you played for ten franchises in fifteen years, and if you look at your stats, Cameron, that year with the Yankees was you know it, it's at the top, and you know you're one of the few people. I mean, there there are more as the years go by that play for the Yankees and the Mets. So. What's the difference? I mean, it's the same city. Is there a difference between the two teams playing for the two teams? There, there is a difference, but now that I'm on this side, I can say it, and, and, and I don't have to, you know, I don't really, really care about what anybody thinks, but there is a difference. You know, I, I really, um, really felt like the, the mentality, uh, the mentality a, a, as far as, you know, the, in the Yankees locker room, there's a business mentality. There's not a lot of silly stuff going on, you know, I like to say. You know, guys are having fun. Guys are enjoying themselves and, you know, having great conversations. But there's not a lot of playtime. There's not a lot of silly stuff going on. You know, guys are showing up. DJ's showing up, and he's calling me over to his locker, and he's just telling me, hey, Cam, let's go out and let's just take these guys out to the back to the shed and just beat the crap out of them. And that's it. That's all he says the rest of the day. You know, it's like there's a, there's a certain mentality and a focus that, you know, nobody cares about their numbers. You know, when I was there, nobody cared about, oh, you know, I feel bad. My swing is bad. It was never I, I, I was like, hey, do what you need to do to help the team win. That's all that matters. Um, so with that said, I think, you know, I will say adding Buck Show Showalter to that locker right. room, I think will help out in an immense way. I think adding, of course, you add Max, what he can do on the mound. But I think from a leadership standpoint, um, those things go a long way. You know, people always wonder why teams don't win or why, why they do win. 
things like that in the club clubhouse make a huge difference. You know, you, how locked in are you on the game? You know, or do you care about your stats or do you care about doing what you can to help the team win? Those things go a long way. And I think, uh, you know, the, the Mets adding Buck will definitely help them uh, refocus, you know, their energy in, in the right direction. And you mentioned that the pinstripes are heavier because the expectation is to go out there and win a championship. So with what the Yankees did in this offseason, Cameron, do you think they're better than they were last year? And do you think they've got a shot? Um, you see, I scratched my head. That's a head scratcher. Um, <laughs> because I, 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 I hate to think that they're done, you know, with the lockout. Uh, this is a tough situation. You know, it's, it's you feel like they need to move fast. I get it um, as a, from a fan standpoint. You know, being on the field, one thing that I know that you can't do is buy championships. Uh, you can go out, you can have the highest payroll, you can do all of that stuff. But if you don't put the right pieces in a locker room together, it'll never happen. It, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I've been on some talented teams, and, you know, if, if one guy's pulling the rope in the same direction or if one guy's, you know, talking on the phone while other guys are pulling the rope, it, it, you know, you, you're going to get beat. It's not going to happen. So. Um, for me, I, th I still think there's some areas they need to uh, address. I think you can never have enough pitching depth. I think they've got to go out and make a move, uh, you know, from a pitching standpoint. I think they have an issue with, with having uh, a log jam, you know, on the infield. Um, I've been watching some been looking at a lot of mock lineups and I'm and I'm sorry it might it might be a part uh, unpopular opinion, but I cannot for the life of me figure out why DJ LeMahieu is not pissing in the lineup every single day. You know, or, or or from opening day, you know, he's a guy who, you talk about consistency. I, I tell people all the time. They ask me. I say he's one of the top five best pure hitters in the in the whole entire game. You know, so, you know, see him not in a lineup is is, is mind blowing to me. So, but again, now I'm on his other side and I'm just a spectator like you guys. So, <laughs> but you're paid to give your opinion and you're doing it. Now, before we let you go, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna do something that's gonna make you smile. So, you were with the Yankees in, in 2019. Uh, so my son Charlie is seven. Uh, so the three years ago he was four, and his favorite player was Cameron Mabin. So it was the high, so it had you, to be the high socks. Had to be the high socks there. But but, here, but listen to this. So he's he's doing this around the house, and I actually I I taped him without him knowing. This is this is Charlie. Ready? On the track at the wall. See ya, a two-on-one by Nabin. There you go. I love it. I love it. He's as smooth as his dad. Matter of fact, like when I call you after this, put Charlie on the phone so I can get some tips because that was uh, sweet. <laughs> that was as smooth as it gets. See, um, that's why I called you. Hey, guys, just so you know, just so you know, uh, back to real quick, back to my audition. When I showed up, uh, you know, my boy Michael K was extremely, extremely dapper. So I, I proceeded to give him the, the nickname that day. You remember Michael? I think so. Re refresh me. You called Choc me a couple of things that day. Chocolate Blanco. Ch Chocolate Blanco. <laughs> is that going to be the nickname the rest of the I, year? I mean, if you listen, if you keep showing up in the booth looking as fly as you did on my audition day, <laughs> then it's going to be Chocolate, Choc Chocolate Blanco for the rest of the year. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm looking forward to working with you. Uh, I've told you off the air. I'll tell you on the air. I think, I think you're going to be outstanding. You've got a great personality. You've got great opinions. So I'm looking forward to it. It starts on Sunday. Uh, I'll be with David, and you'll drop in the booth, and then you and I are doing the game on, on Monday alone. Looking forward to it, man. I'm uh, looking forward to learning from the best. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on today. Thanks, Cam. You got it. Thanks, Good luck. Good luck. You got right. it.